Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the Project Media Effects Bay Part 3 in Reaper. Now, in the previous two videos, we've gone over the source media, the media items, the effects, and the effects parameters. So let's start with the item groups, which shouldn't be confused with the track groups in Reaper, because it's based on our items. As we can see right now, there's no item groups in this project. Let's create some. Let's double click the kick track, go to the item menu, go to group, and choose group items. Or we can just type the G key to create an item group for our kick drum, which shows up right over here. Let's create another. Let's double click the snare, type G, and that creates an item group for our snare. Now we can right click over here to select all the items in our group. So now we can move them together as a group, or delete them, or duplicate them, or even change their item volume right here. And we could also rename the group from here as well. Let's name it Kicks and rename this one Snares, making it easier to see what each group contains. And we could also delete our groups from here. Just right click, delete group, but keep the items. And it deletes the kick group, but we still have the items in our project. And we could also merge our groups by just selecting the items from one group and drag and drop it into the other. Now they're both in this group, which we could rename drums. And now both of these items are in the drums group. So we could right click to select the group, and all the items in the group are selected. We can move them together, duplicate them. Delete them. Now, from this window, we can also select the items within the group and right click them, mute them, change their name, or remove them from the group. Or we can create new groups from selected items in our project. Let's create a group based on the synth loop. Double click this track, right click over here, create new group from selected items, and we can give it a name right away. And now that group shows up here as well. And we could also create groups just by double clicking in this window. Let's select all our piano items. Just double click over here. And it's gonna create a group automatically based on the items we selected. And that group shows up right here along with the items in it. Now, if this list gets too long, we can still use the filter in this window. Type piano, and just the items with piano in their name show up. Or we could just close these folders to make this window a bit neater. And we can see all the details for the items in the groups in the columns over here. So that's the item groups. Next, we're going to check out the take comps. Now, for this, we're going to use a different project that shows off takes. I have one here where I've recorded a vocal with four takes of the singer. And we can choose the different takes we want to hear just by clicking on them, like this. And if we want to save what we did, we could either delete the unused takes, or we could save this as a comp. We could just right click, go to comps, and choose save as new comp. And we can see here, I've already saved three of them. And they show up right here. And we could choose to view them by right clicking and choose activate comp. 
and that shows and plays back the comp we saved at the time. Let's do the same with comp two, activate comp, and this is the comp we saved as comp two. We could also rename our comps in here as well. Just right click, rename comp, we can rename it right here. And we could also create and save new comps in this window as well. Let's create one like this. And let's say we want to save this comp. We could just right click over here, create new comp from Active Takes, give it a name, hit OK. And now that comp is saved as well. Or we could delete our comps and keep the takes right from here. And that deletes that comp from the project bay. Now, if we open up right here, we can see the different takes we chose and the information about them, their status, the track they're on, and so on. But we could also compare the different comps in this window. For example, in comp one, we can make it active right here. And now all the takes that show up right here are active. But if we want to compare that to comp two, we can see in comp two, all these takes are inactive. So comp one and comp two are very different. But if we go to comp three, there's a few lines that are comped the same. Like the third line right here is the same in comp one and comp three. And the same thing for this line. It uses vocal two. So it's a great way of comparing the different comps to see if they're similar or different. And we could also make the takes active in here as well. Right now we're viewing comp one, but we can go to comp two and make the first phrase active from this comp, or the second one, or the third one, and combine the best of each comp, and then save it by either right clicking over here or just double clicking. That's going to save this comp right here. So that's the take comps tab. Next, we have the automation items. And we can see down here in our project, I've already set up some volume automation items on this track, some pan ones, and a filter down here. Now, an automation item. Is basically automation on our envelopes turned into an item. So you can move it around just like any other items in our project. Now these two are pooled, which means if I make an adjustment on this one, it affects this one as well. Or if I make an adjustment on this one, it affects this one as well. So they're basically pooled, where they both behave exactly the same. The other ones are not pooled, so they're independent of each other. And they all show up in the Automations tab in the Project Media Effects Bay. So we could use a lot of the same features that we did in the other tabs. For instance, we could select them from here and right click, go to our usage, and see where they used in the project. And we could choose it from here, and we'll see it down here. Although, this is a great time to use the option I showed you over here. Mirror selection in Bay and Project. So if we turn this on, which is off by default, if we select our automation items over here, they're going to be selected down here, and vice versa. If we select it from here, they're also selected up here, which makes it easier to see which automation item we're grabbing. We could also mute our automation items from here. Just right click, choose mute, and this automation item and the pooled one are both muted, which means the automation isn't going to play. And we could unmute it from here. And we could also mute all the automation items right from here as well. Select them all, right click, mute, and all the automation items in our project get muted, so they won't play back. And we can see that in the status. 
And we could also insert them from here. Let's select this one, put our cursor over here. Then we could right click over here, insert into project, and we could do it pooled or unpooled. Again, if we do it pooled, it's going to insert this item being pooled with this one. So if we adjust this or redraw it, they're both redrawn at the same time. And we could also rename our automation items in here as well. Let's rename this first one for volume. First one, volume. And it puts that name in here, but also over here on the item. So you can see what that item is doing. Let's add a name to this one. Right click, rename automation item. We'll name it chorus one pan. Now that item is named that way, which makes it easier in here, but also in here. And just like the other things in this window, we can retain the automation items if they're deleted. Let's delete this one, but first retain it right here. Then we can remove it from the project. See, it's gone, but now we can insert it because it's still available right here but it's not active in the project. Put our cursor right here, right click, insert into project, pooled or unpooled, and it inserts that automation item right here. And we could also replace our items by selecting them, right click, replace in project, and we could replace it with any other automation item in the project, whether it's being used or if it's retained from before, like this one. And that replaces the previous one with the new one. And then finally, we could right click over here and create a new folder to reorganize all the automation items in our project. So that's the automation items tab in the project bay. So that's pretty much it. That's the Project Media Effects Bay in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.